King Charles III's ascension to the throne heralds a new chapter in the lengthy and turbulent history of the British monarchy. And now winter is coming amid high inflation, war in Europe, energy supply problems, and a new prime minister. Malcolm Brabant reports from outside London in Marlow. At 12 noon precisely, muffled bells rang out across Britain. This was Marlow, a quintessentially prosperous English town west of London on the River Thames. Oh, there's something quite poetic about it. It's very sad. For retired headmistress Athenia Ruff, tolling the bells was a solemn obligation. We don't often practice because we don't often have to do it. But when we do, the first few rounds are, are, are quite poignant. And in fact, the more it goes on, the more poignant it is. Oh, it's very important. Just as when the Queen celebrated her Platinum Jubilee, all of the ringers within Marlow came to have a ring, because that's the way we show our um, appreciation, appreciation or, or on this occasion, to mark her, her decline. All Saints echoed to the sound of Bach as people were drawn to the church for quiet contemplation. Organist Richard Harker. It's, it's going to be intensely emotional for everybody over the, certainly the next few weeks, I think. She's been such a presence in all of our lives for, well, certainly all of my life, for many people's lives. And I think we're genuinely going to miss her and that stability and her just omnipresence, if you like, just that security that she's given to the country over so many years. In All Saints and every church across England, people signed books of condolence. I think it's very sad for Britain. I think, I think it, it, it's another knock, isn't it, for the nation in a, in a climate that's not, um, not that conducive to joy and happiness. Um, and I think there'll be a lot of mourning and a lot of thinking about what's really important. I am 70 years old, so I've never known any other queen. And uh, it feels like a big hole has opened up. She was so wonderful. And uh, it's like my grandmother dying. An hour later, another face of modern Britain, 15 miles away in Slough, one of the most diverse towns in the country. Its people speak 150 different languages. The Queen was the protector of all faiths, and so her loss was also keenly felt here. We look like we miss our own mother. She was a proper Queen. We missed her by heart. Whatever she done for all the world, Nobody could have done it. We as a Muslim community have always integrated uh, very well within the British culture and we've always had the support. Um, so the Queen has played a big part into obviously our, our heritage and us being here. So we obviously appreciate everything she has done for us. All world is mourning for her. Entire world. And we are the people of this country and we lost a great friend. Prince Charles is inheriting the crown at a time when Britain is facing a multitude of problems. There's rapidly rising inflation. Food and energy prices are going through the roof. And millions of people here are extremely worried about whether or not they can put food on the table or keep warm this winter. Trust in politicians is evaporating. The monarch here is constitutionally required to stay out of politics. And yet somehow, new King Charles has to find a way to provide leadership, inspiration, and to ensure that an ancient, anachronistic institution remains relevant in today's society. I think in today's society, I think the monarchy um, and the royals are probably irrelevant. Slough's Deputy Mayor Sabia Akram doesn't think that King Charles can do much to alleviate the struggles of the people she represents. I think there's a lot of uncertainty. People are worried, but they, again, they don't have the luxury of um, sitting around and waiting and worrying. And most people have two jobs at the moment. Some people are looking at third jobs. At the mosque, there was recognition of the challenges facing Britain's new monarch. This guy needs to, you know, he's been talking all his life, he needs to do some action now. And I think, you know, with the way the parties are, the, the politics in this country is, it's a complete mess. 
you know, there's such a big divide between Labour and Conservative and then you've got far-right parties coming up. There has to be a unification kind of person or an entity or an organisation that can start bringing people together because it's going to get worse and it will. Back in picturesque Marlow, there was confidence that the succession will be smooth. I think we'll be fine with Charles. It's not everybody's first choice. I feel like it'd be too much for Leap going to William. I think Charles links us to the Queen, links all those traditions that have been the bedrock of our country for a very long time. So I think we need to give him a chance and um, get behind him because I think he's the one that will steer us through. I think personally that we're in a very good position to, to move ahead with the constitutional monarchy and, and to King Charles. Nevertheless, while the Queen was universally venerated, there's a widespread sense that King Charles III now has to earn the respect of his subjects. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Marlowe.